Hello everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel Enjoy Biochemistry. I am Dr. Trupti and in this video we are going to learn about vitamin B7 that is biotin. Biotin it is a water soluble vitamin. It is also called as vitamin H or anti egg white injury factor. So this biotin it is present in the egg yolk and it is called as anti egg white injury factor while the glycoprotein avidin it is present in the white of egg and it is called as egg white injury factor this is the sulfur containing vitamin this vitamin it is synthesized by bacteria yeast fungi it is stored in liver and kidneys and it is involved in various carboxylation reactions structure of biotin consists of imidazole ring this is the imidazole ring which is fused with this thiophen ring and this is sulfur is present here so it is the sulfur containing vitamin and this is the carbon dioxide binding site in carboxylation reactions this is side chain valeric acid and this side chain of biotin it binds with the epsilon group of lysine residue of carboxylase There are three forms of biotin the first one is biotin itself it is the only biotin it has nothing else other than biotin it is the dietary form as well as transport form of biotin and it is the inactive form the second form of biotin it has lysine along with it and that's why it is called as biocytin it is produced during digestion of biotin and it is produced in the target cells too it is the apoenzyme form and it is called as intermediate form of biotin the third form is called as carboxy biocytin so it has biotin plus lysine plus carbon dioxide and it is produced in the target cell during carboxylation reactions and it is the active form of biotin and it is called as holoenzyme so there are three forms of biotin biotin itself biocytin containing biotin plus lysine and carboxy biocytin which has biotin lysine and carbon dioxide coming to the dietary sources and rda of biotin so it is derived from both plant as well as animal sources the various plant sources are legumes grains tomatoes carrots yeast peanut cauliflower etc so these are the various plant sources of biotin now which are the animal sources so it can be derived from meat poultry liver kidney egg yolk salmon fish milk etc so it can be derived from both plant as well as animal sources and it can also be synthesized from the intestinal flora the daily requirement in adult male and female is about 30 microgram per day and lactation it is increased to 35 microgram per day now let's see the metabolism of biotin we can get biotin from both diet as well as it is synthesized by intestinal bacterial flora now in the diet the biotin is bound to protein so it is a dietary protein bound biotin in the gastrointestinal tract the proteolysis occurs with the help of gastrointestinal enzyme and there is formation of biotinyl peptides now in the intestine this biotinyl peptides there is release of this biotin by action of enzyme intestinal biotinid biotinidase but if this biotinyl peptides they have lysine along with it if it is a biocytin then it cannot be hydrolyzed by the intestinal enzyme biotinidase and there is no release of biotin if it is a biocytin so both biotin and biocytin they are absorbed in the intestinal mucosal cell and further this biocytin it is uh, by the action of enzyme biocytinase it is converted to free biotin now this biotin it is a transport form in the circulation and it reaches to various target organs and in the various target or organs or cells this is localized in cytoplasmic and mitochondrial carboxylases avidin which is present in the raw egg it binds tightly with biotin and prevents its absorption avidin is present in the white of egg and that's why consumption of raw egg can cause biotin deficiency now let's see the various functions of biotin biotin acts as coenzyme in various carboxylation reactions and this carboxylase it is the multi enzyme complex having 
biotin carboxyl carrier protein bccp biotin carboxylase and trans carboxylase and the carboxylation reaction requires abc that is atp biotin and carbon dioxide carbon dioxide in the form of bicarbonate so first there is atp combines with this bicarbonate by the action of enzyme biotin carboxylase the carbon dioxide from this bicarbonate it is transferred to bccp that is biotin carboxyl carrier protein and there is for formation of this carboxylated bccp and there is release of adp and inorganic phosphate so this first step that is the transfer of bicarbonate the carbon dioxide from bicarbonate to bccp it is carried out by biotin carboxylase now this carbon dioxide linked to the bccp has to be transferred to the substrate and here we are taking example of uh, acetyl coa carboxylation to malonyl coa which is the important step of fatty acid synthesis so from this carboxylated bccp this carbon dioxide it is transferred to this acetyl coa by the action of enzyme trans carboxylase to form malonyl coa so that's how biotin plays a very important role in various carboxylation reactions so this biotin it is a cofactor of uh, important four enzymes which are those the first is acetyl coa carboxylase it is the enzyme of fatty acid synthesis responsible for carboxylation of acetyl coa to malonyl coa so it is the step of fatty acid synthesis requiring atp biotin and carbon dioxide there is carboxylation of acetyl coa to malonyl coa second step it is the propionyl coa carboxylase and this is the this is required for beta oxidation of odd chain fatty acid where propionyl coa is carboxylated to d methyl malonyl coa so this propionyl coa carboxylase requires biotin as a cofactor third is pyruvate carboxylase third carboxylase enzyme is pyruvate carboxylase this is the important uh, enzyme required in gluconeogenesis where pyruvate is carboxylated to oxaloacetate this requires a b c atp biotin and carbon dioxide so biotin is required here as a cofactor the fourth important enzyme is beta methyl crotonyl coa carboxylase and this is the important step in the leucine metabolism where beta methyl crotonyl coa it is carboxylated to beta methyl glutaconyl coa and this is also a carboxylation reaction so biotin is a cofactor of four important enzyme acetyl coa carboxylase of fatty acid synthesis propionyl coa carboxylase of beta oxidation of odd chain fatty acid pyruvate carboxylase of gluconeogenesis and beta methyl crotonyl coa carboxylase of leucine metabolism now we know that biotin is required for various carboxylation reaction but there are some carboxylation reactions in the body which are uh, biotin independent which do not require biotin as cofactor which are those first is the conversion of ammonia and carbon dioxide to carbamyl phosphate that is the first step of urea cycle and pyrimidine synthesis so that and that step is catalyzed by the carbamyl phosphate synthetase it does not require the carboxylase uh, enzyme which is biotin dependent so that car carbamyl phosphate synthetase which is required for formation of carbamyl phosphate and it is the rate limiting step of urea and pyrimidine synthesis it is also a carboxylation reaction and it is biotin independent second carboxylation reaction which is biotin independent it is the addition of carbon dioxide to form c6 of purine ring and it does not require biotin third is malic enzyme which converts pyruvate to malate so it is also a carboxylation reaction which Uh, do not require biotin there are other biochemical functions of biotin and the first one is regulation of cell cycle biotin is necessary for normal progression of cells through cell cycle and if it is deficient then it arrests g1 phase of cell cycle second is regulator of uh, gene expression it is the regulator of gene expression it is involved in expression of genes for the formation of p450 oncoprotein cytokines and its receptors
it is also required for growth of hair and nails so biotin is known to be involved in the normal growth of hair and nails so these are various other functions of biotin other than the carboxylation reactions what are the various causes of biotin deficiency it can occur in variety of conditions like prolonged consumption of raw egg white because the uh, egg white contains avidin which is the antagonist of biotin and it reduces or inhibits the absorption of biotin and that's why prolonged consumption of raw eggs around 20 raw eggs per day can cause the biotin deficiency destruction of intestinal flora by antibiotics so as we know that biotin can also be synthesized by intestinal flora so prolonged use of antibiotics can lead to destruction of the flora and deficiency of biotin if there is multiple carboxylase deficiency it can lead to biotin deficiency and in case of breastfed infants if they have diarrhea and we know that the breast milk is a poor source of biotin so they can uh, there can be a lehner's disease if the uh, infant is breastfed and he or she has diarrhea so all are the various causes of deficiency of biotin what are the various deficiency manifestations of biotin deficiency so biotin deficiency can be manifested as dermatitis atrophic glossitis hyperesthesia muscle pain anorexia nausea and hallucinations and if there is multiple carboxylase deficiency it can occur due to mutation of this uh, btd gene which is present on the chromosome 3 it is a autosomal recessive disorder it is seen in 2 to 5 months of age and the manifestations are seizures hypotonia alopecia developmental delay optic atrophy hearing loss and tomcat urine odor so these are the various uh, manifestations of biotin deficiency the biotin deficiency can be assessed by the various metabolites which are excreted in the urine so there is accumulation of various substrate of biotin dependent enzymes They, those are excreted in urine in biotin deficiency and those are lactate beta methyl crotonate beta hydroxy isovaler valerate beta hydroxy propionate so all these can be measured which are excreted through urine and the biotinidase assay the normal level is 2 to 8 nanomole per ml per minute so this is how the biotin deficiency can be assessed how it can be treated it it, it can be treated by oxybiotin injection 100 to 300 microgram and oral biotin supplements like 5 to 10 mg per day biotin antagonist avidin is a biotin antagonist and streptavidin it can bind to four molecules of avidin and it is used to detect pathogen in the elisa test that is enzyme linked immunosorbent assay so there is role of this avidin in the form of streptavidin for the detection of pathogen the other biotin antagonists are biotin sulfonic acid desthiobiotin and imidazolidin carboxylic acid so in today's video we have seen the chemistry right resources rda metabolism biochemical functions deficiency causes deficiency manifestations assessment and treatment of biotin deficiency now we will see some important mcqs on this topic so the first mcq is consumption of raw eggs can cause deficiency of pantothenic acid biotin riboflavin or thiamine so we know that raw egg has a avidin which is the antagonist of biotin so it will lead to biotin that is b7 deficiency anti egg white injury factor is pyridoxin biotin lipoic acid or thiamine so it is biotin biotin is also called as vitamin b7 vitamin h and it is the anti egg white injury factor and avidin is called as egg white injury factor and biotin is called as anti egg white injury factor so the answer here is b that is biotin the coenzyme responsible for carboxylation reaction is biocytin tpp plp tpp is thiamine pyrophosphate plp is pyridoxal phosphate or nad so we know that for carboxylation reaction bio tin is required and biocytin it is the coenzyme for um, required for the carboxylation reaction so biotin plus lysine it is responsible for carboxylation reaction which is involved in the transfer of uh, carbon dioxide from substrate to the carboxylated substrate so here the answer is biocytin
the vitamin as a coenzyme required for fatty acid synthesis is is it thymine riboflavin folic acid or biotin so we know that for the fatty acid synthesis the first step is acetyl coa is carboxylated to malonyl coa by action of enzyme acetyl coa carboxylase and this reaction is the carboxylation reaction which require biotin so that's why biotin here it is required as a coenzyme for fatty acid synthesis so i hope this video on biotin will be useful to you and if you like the content on this channel please subscribe to this channel like and share the videos and help this channel to grow thank you for watching and happy learning